Speaking of uh, conservatives and whether or not they would be able to stand up to schools of thought like Catholic social thoughts, which again is pretty much um, left-wing politics, radical left-wing politics from environmentalism to communism, but with uh, under the banner of God and Jesus and the Bible. But uh, from what I can tell, conservatives are increasingly abandoning individualism. They're throwing individualism into the garbage, including conservatives who used to speak the language of individualism. Like this clip right here, as you can see, it has the caption of American Revolution was liberation of individualism. This was uh, by Charlie Kirk. He put this up on uh, Turning Point USA. And uh, he did say something interesting in this that I want to uh, address really quick. Let's, um, let's play a little bit of this. Because there's three big revolutions that you can kind of chart human history right now. The three big revolutions. We talked about the American Revolution. Then there's the French Revolution and the Russian Revolution. Three uniquely different philosophical trends. Russian and French have some in common. So the French Revolution, so the, the American Revolution was really originated from Lockean, more natural rights type ideas. Scottish Enlightenment type ideas, okay? For any philosophy majors out there? Enlightenment ideas, huh? Anyone? Yay, good for Enlightenment you ideas. So, um, <laughs> it's good. Get a double major in business or something. Yeah, so get a, you know, get a, get an undergrad in something as well with that. But um, no, I think more people should study this philosophy because it's super important. So the Scottish Enlightenment, honestly, the most, I think the most formative thinkers that built Western civilization. These are folks like Adam Smith, like John Locke, and, and the idea of natural. What about Jesus? Well, rights. What is natural rights? What is natural rights? It's that my rights upon your birth are with upon you. your no birth, it. huh? Upon did I hear that correctly? Are we getting that? Let, 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 let's hear that again. Those formative thinkers that built Western civilization. These are folks like Adam Smith, like John Locke. And, and the idea of natural rights. What natural is, rights. What is natural rights. It's that my rights upon your birth. Are upon your b -b 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 birth. Uh, what implications might that have? Huh, Charlie? Huh? You only get rights at birth. So does that mean that uh, we get to keep abortion legal? But it's not just Charlie Kirk. Ben Shapiro used to speak the language of individualism. Uh, during a Q&A he had years ago, Ben, you know, this is according to an article from Lone Conservative, written in uh, 2017 by Jeff Tomlin. Ben Shapiro destroys leftist idea of individualism being racist. And in this uh, article, it cites a video, a Q&A that Ben Shapiro was doing at an event saying conservatism says you don't get any special treatment if you're white, you don't get special treatment if you're black, you don't get special treatment if you're anything because you're an individual human being and your race should not matter. You're goddamn right. So that's, uh, th these were conservatives like Charlie Kirk, Ben Shapiro. Now, what are people like Ben Shapiro saying about individualism? Well, back in November of 2022, Ben Shapiro said that social institutions are important. They shape you and connect you to society. The left, the left, the left. What, what are you on the left? Has made government the ultimate social institution and has replaced marriage and family with atomistic individualism. What the fuck does that even mean? Atomistic individualism. And are we really going to go here after Ben uh, kind of distinguished conservatism from the left years ago? By rightly noting that, yeah, the left uh, traditionally has been anti-individualism, at least outside of maybe a handful of centrists and moderates and self-proclaimed neoliberals. 
that may speak the language of individualism in a lot of contexts, but largely the left is uh, opposed to individualism. They're very collectivistic. The left, the socialist left, the identity politics left, anything but into, but I guess according to Ben Shapiro, that's what the left is promoting these days is uh, atomistic individualism. Is that what I'm supposed to believe now? Anyway, here's what uh, some conservatives like Charlie Kirk, here's what they're saying about individualism now in the year 2023. This was uh, this was on the Patrick Bet David podcast, Valuetainment. As you can see, this is a channel with over 4 million subscribers. This video has almost half a million views after 10 days. This is what uh, Charlie Kirk had to say about individualism just 10 days ago. Acting morally, and that's a complete change. And it's done rather subversively, right, in our, in our culture. And so, but here's the thing, kind of the post, post-60s worldview, the moral view that came in in the post 60s, and it didn't really set in until now, it took 60 years, is hyper-individualism. Hyper-individualism, huh? And I'm all for entrepreneurship and for people to succeed, but you must balance that, you must counterbalance it with duty and obligations. Yeah, do, duty and obligation to what, Charlie? Huh? If it's all about just the pursuit of your own pleasures and your own delights, you will be not just empty, I think you're going to be miserable. And so we build an entire society. To the extent that he's talking about hedonism, he's not entirely wrong here. I think on this very dangerous... But I get the sense that he's uh, throwing out some babies with the bathwater. ...this moral pretext. And we wonder why we have the most depressed, suicidal, anxious generation in history. Yeah, it's because of... It's individualism, huh? Charlie? Huh? I, I totally sympathize with every accusation of American Christianity that you could imagine. They could be hypocritical. Their churches are too big. They don't give enough to the poor. I think some of that is a little silly. But it is a fact that as we have turned our back on American Christianity with the roots of it, that we are less free, we are more confused, and we are filling it with these other fake religions that we could talk about. The religion of anti-racism, the religion of scientism, right? Even earth worship at times, which is hyper, you know. Global warming. Yeah, environmentalism. Yeah. And so. So yeah, we see Charlie, he's really bringing, uh, bringing it back to Christianity here. And he's not a Catholic, to my knowledge. I think he's a Protestant. But uh, if the Catholic uh, social thought intellectuals uh, start advocating for Catholic social thought, What's Charlie going to have to say against them? Especially if he's throwing individualism into the garbage. Uh, what ground does he have to stand on if they start advocating for uh, a lot of this? Uh, what, from what I, I could tell, it's just left-wing nonsense under the banner of Jesus and the Bible. What, 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 uh, what, how can Charlie, someone like a Charlie Kirk even respond to that? There's a great book by Tom Holland. He calls it Dominion. It's not a great title, but he, it's Holland with an E. But yeah, it's how, the, how Christians remade, uh, revolutionized the world. I encourage everyone to read it. And he's actually a secular agnostic who argues that what we consider to be common sense, what we consider to be normal, is a traditional inheritance from the Christian history. And you might not like Christianity. You might Which not. is funny because we just watched that uh, clip where he was uh, talking about how Western civilization was really built by Enlightenment ideas from people like Adam Smith and John Locke. You might not believe Jesus is the king of the world. But now, and now I guess it was all Jesus. It was all Jesus that created uh, the free country that uh, that's called America. It was Christian thought. Not enlightenment thought. I do, but you should at least accept that if you remove Christianity as the bedrock of your civilization. Yeah, it's the bedrock of civilization. Be careful what you fill it with, because currently we're filling it with garbage. And he's not entirely wrong to say that, yeah, uh, people are turning against uh, religion and Christianity. And a lot of the alternatives that we see, especially from what's called the left, it's pretty terrible. 
I would offer objectivism. Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand. But I think this gets to a bigger problem, or I think this gets to a bigger issue at hand, I, in that I don't think this is really about individualism. Individualism is not to blame here. Individualism is the recognition that each person is a sovereign, independent entity uh, with uh, an inalienable right to their own life. A right derived uh, according to the virtue of selfishness. A right derived from his nature as a rational being. Individualism holds that a civilized society or any form of association, cooperation, or peaceful coexistence among men can be achieved only on the basis of the recognition of individual rights and that a group such as has no rights other than the individual rights of its members. You're goddamn right. But what Charlie Kirk is talking about is not really individualism, but uh, morality, ethics. In other words, you can't just have uh, individualism. You can't just recognize that people are individual. But people have to, uh, they have to have uh, codes of ethics. There have to be rules in society. I think it should be centered around uh, individual rights uh, on the recognition of the individual. And people need to be encouraged that if uh, they're going to choose life, that they need to think for themselves and really prioritize their own life and happiness and values and try to get the most out of life. And uh, we saw more of the abandonments of individualism, again, with someone like Ben Shapiro, who talked about this in a video he put up uh, about two weeks ago. Here's what uh, Ben Shapiro had to say. You know, the communities of society, the less you are marginalized and, and self-marginalizing from those groups, the, the less likely you are to suffer from suicidal ideation. Now, the West has decided that there are essentially two paths to go down in fighting. And Ben Shapiro is essentially, he's uh, going to elaborate more on what Charlie Kirk talked about here. He's going to blame suicide on individualism, which is just... this sort of marginalization. One is that we require of people who are feeling marginalized that they actually attempt some level of conformity with the community. Because after all, if you explode the standards of the community, it's no longer a community and everybody loses the social cohesion. But then, essentially, the left has argued that the only way- The left has argued. That we can have true social cohesion is to have no standards. This has been wildly unsuccessful because, again, the social fabric- And now he's going to uh, essentially conflate individualism with anarchy. Individualism, according to Ben Shapiro, I guess, means the erosion of rules and standards and institutions and tradition. If you fray it too much, it just doesn't exist anymore. If you keep pulling the threads of the social fabric apart by saying it needs to be expanded to include everybody, then eventually you just have a series of threads and you don't actually have any, social, any, any sort of fabric anymore. The quilt comes apart. And that's essentially what's happened in our society. We've tugged so hard at the threads of our, of our social fabric that it's fallen apart all in the name of the individual and, and preventing the marginalization of the- Yeah, and the individual. Individual, instead of recognizing that there actually is, if you want to be a cohesive person, a duty for you to integrate into the society around you and to, yes, abide by some of its rules and some of its roles and some of its restrictions and that people find meaning in those rules, roles, and restrictions. I guess it would depend on the society. If it's an individualistic society, that honors and recognizes individual rights, at least to a certain, if not large extent, then sure, yeah, people should be expected to integrate into that society. If it's a culture like, say, the Islamic Republic of Iran or communist Cuba, then I might try to get the fuck out or demand significant change, demand a significant overhaul and, uh, societal standards. Why should people be expected to integrate into a society if the society is um, terrible? Okay, so back to the causes of increases in suicidal levels, uh, uh, societal levels of suicidal ideation. So Emil Durkheim writing in On Suicide, he says, however individualized a person may be, there's always something collective that remains, which is the feeling of depression and melancholy that arises from this exaggerated individualism. 
One exaggerated individualism. One has nothing else to share. One participates through sadness. In other words, you think of yourself as an individual and that you have moved beyond. I am an individual. It's a, it's, it's a fact. On the boundaries of society, but you still need to share something. And so, ironically. Share what? Huh? By separating off from the society that you, says mar that you say marginalizes you, you, you still need a new society. So what do you do? You find other people who are miserable and you hang out with those other people who are miserable. The onlines make this super easy. You find like-minded people who are equally miserable and then you share a social contagion with them. Again, amazing that Durkheim is predicting this back in 1897. Yeah, 1897. I think he was a French philosopher. Um, maybe Ben should read up on how, um, how some of the countries in Central Europe that uh, rejected individualism in favor of collectivism and duty and obligations uh, and see how that worked out for the cultures that uh, went down that path soon after that. He suggests that a generalized unmooring through a belief in the unfairness of the system also leads to depression and suicidal ideation. So instead of you looking within yourself and deciding, you know, I'm doing my best and whatever my best is, is essentially good enough, you decide that you deserve more. You decide that society is unfair and therefore you're constantly desiring a higher level of success and you're blaming society when you fail. Well, if you, if you feel like you're constantly running up against reality, that is in fact depressing. So again, it sounds like the problem here is not individualism, but people having unrealistic expectations. And I think the solution to that is to maybe encourage people to be more reality oriented and uh, deal with life accordi uh, accordingly. Perhaps uh, rethink a few things if uh, things are not working out. Recalibrate your expectations and act accordingly. For instance, I'm sure that um, over the last few decades that millions of men in the United States grew up dreaming of becoming a professional athlete. Because it sounds like an awesome gig. You get paid millions of dollars to play a game and you're treated like a hero in your local community. But at a certain point, as we know, millions of people have to ultimately deal with the, the reality. Millions of people who dreamed of becoming a professional athlete, like a Michael Jordan or a Barry Sanders or a Barry Bonds or a Wayne Gretzky or a Tom Brady... Uh, they ultimately have to deal with the reality that it's uh, just not gonna happen. Oftentimes, people, they're just not big enough. They're not athletic enough. They're not fast enough. There are always just going to be thousands, if not millions of people, bigger, faster, and stronger than you. Sometimes to, sometimes with personal connections to stuff like personal trainers in training camps. And you know what? A lot of that just is not fair. Now, has everyone who's ever dreamed of becoming a professional athlete uh, that did not end up making it, did everyone suddenly kill themselves once they realized that they were never going to play in the NBA or the NFL or the NHL or whatever? That's somewhat of a rhetorical question. But going back to what I was talking about with Charlie Kirk, individualism only gets you so far. I would encourage people, again, to think for themselves, prioritize your own goals and happiness, be realistic about your expectations and learn how to deal with stuff like failure, learn how to make adjustments and try to make the most out of life. And I would ask, what sort of society, what sort of culture is more likely to make someone miserable, perhaps to the point of suicide? A society that is centered around individualism, that encourages people to think for themselves and try to make the most out of their life and prioritize their happiness, or a culture that demands duties and obligations and sacrifice, especially going back to Charlie Kirk, he thinks Christianity is the answer. Christianity with its original sin and altruism and promise of a better experience in the afterlife. But even godless collectivistic cultures, 
cultures that will guilt you for being, uh, you know, too successful, will guilt you for being too rich, demand that you give back, tell you that you did not build that, and demand that you uh, make sacrifices. Which culture do you think is more likely to make someone miserable? An individualistic one or a collectivistic one? I'll let you guys figure that one out. He says, under this pressure, everyone in his particular sphere has a vague idea of the limit toward which his ambition may reach and does not aspire to anything beyond. This is in a well-integrated society. If, he, if at least he respects the rules and submits to the collective authority, that is- Yeah, to submits to the collective authority. I would be careful encouraging people to uh, submit to a collective authority. No offense, but it sounds like some fucking commie gobbledygook. If he has a healthy moral constitution, he feels it is not right to demand any more than this. A goal and a limit are thus set for desires, but- when there are no goals and there are no limits to desires and you demand everything from a system that can't provide it to you. you Again, this sounds like unrealistic expectations, not individualism. End up depressed. You end up with anime. You end up with, with suicidal ideation. Again, the, the notion of the individual is integrated into society and civilizing into society was well known in the psychiatric community, including all the way up to Freud. It's really in the post-Freudian. Yeah, and he's talking about two separate issues, individualism and integration, as if they're like at odds with one another era in the 1960s, the people start to argue that the individual ought to fight the social fabric itself and liberate himself in order to be free. Now, there's nothing more depressing. I just want you to think for a moment on your own, on your own level. Think for a second about being alone on a desert island. Does that constitute freedom to you? Would you be free? You're just alone on the rest of your life. You'd be alone on a desert island. No rules, no roles, no restrictions. You're able to do whatever you want on this desert island. No other people. Nothing. No societal institutions. Are you free or are you basically in prison? Um, I would say no. And I think this is a total straw man that I hear from a lot of people who don't think individualism is real. They'll try to chalk it up as uh, everyone living on their own little desert island. Uh, again, I think uh, what Big Ben is doing, and he should know better. I thought he knew better than this, but he's conflating individualism with anarchy. And asking, uh, hey, do you feel, would you feel free if you were just alone on a desert island? But uh, the fact is, freedom requires a society that recognizes that each person is an individualism. And therefore, you need rules and enforcement of rules that protect individuals from coercion. You're goddamn right. But uh, yeah, I guess this is the state of conservatives who uh, claim to oppose the left, the long history of collectivism left wing in American politics. And now they're trying to make it sound like the left is what is, has been uh, individualistic this whole time. That's just not smart. <laughs>